nice and cozy here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. Watch my move. Um, now I understand this is your um, debut feature length film. Yes. Is great. So if you could just tell us a bit maybe about how the idea came about, how it all came together. All um, I was editing a short film um, called Happy Ending and I was looking for noise. So I searched on the internet, noise, noise, uh, and I stumbled upon something called noise music. And I was like, oh, that's bizarre. So I did some research about noise music, and it turns out that the guy that wrote the noise manifesto, apparently, was an Italian guy named Luigi Russolo. And I thought, wow, that guy could be my grandfather. <laughs> so I thought, what if that was the case? So that's how the character of Dagobert came about. Uh, he was a descendant of this noise family, I don't know. So, yeah, and so from that, I, w I wanted something silly that I could use to treat a subject like art, which is a touchy subject, you know? And so I used something like noise, because to me it was bizarre what, what these people were doing. And it remains to this day after I did a movie about it, so, yeah. I mean, I thought it was really interesting the way that um, the film, as, as you said, sort of satirizes um, art and, and music as well. I mean, is it your intention at all to make a statement, or is it just, just a bit of fun, you know, more sort of the comedy element? Well, I wanted it to be uh, a satire, obviously, but definitely a statement, in my opinion. I mean, it's an individual creating within a group. I mean, and Dagobert is eccentric and crazy, obviously, but... Uh, I think that his role um, was important within a group because they wanted to do something that he didn't want to do. And I think it happens a lot in our society when, you know, the majority decides something, then everyone has to go along, you know, or like the individuals. I, I thought that, yeah, definitely I wanted to like try and make a statement of some kind. I mean, it's not. And what sparked the decision to make it um, seem almost like a documentary? Um, I knew that I wasn't going to have a lot of uh, uh, means to make this movie. And so I decided that the best format was to make it look like I wasn't trying to make it slick. Because if you try to make it pretty and you don't have enough money to make it look pretty, then it's, you know, it's not good. Because people can tell. It's like, oh, he's trying to make it. But like this, you know, it's full of mistakes. And you're like, ah, whatever, you know, let's just go ahead and do it. But with the documentary thing, it could be like there's like, amateur people that are like captured. We don't know who they are. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's a mockumentary. People talk about the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, the genre, it's a mockumentary. I don't think it's that. It's just that I wanted it. I wanted people to be aware that they're watching a movie as they're watching the movie. If you notice, there is a scene when I go to Philip to tell him that I'm sorry that he brought the guitar, that I edit me sitting on one side of the couch and then the other side, and it's bizarre. And that's uh, because uh, I wanted people that are watching it that they become aware of the fact that it's a movie, that I'm lying, obviously, because it's not real. And so things like this that I put throughout the movie, I wanted to do. So and if, I don't know. Is there any plan to get the, the band together and do a real show, you know, in a sort of spinal tap <laughs> type, type thing? Uh, no, no, I don't, I, I don't think so. But, I mean, maybe it would be fun to do, like, a little short film with the band. Uh, and they're all friends of mine, you know, and, and so definitely it would be... It was hard. I, I was scared when I started doing those noise scenes because it was silly. You know, it's like you're there with uh, these objects and there's, you gather all these people and you're like, this is so silly what we're doing. <laughs> but anyway, we did it and thanks to them, they really believed in it, I guess. They believed in the fact that it was going to work. Can you um, relate to Dagaba uh, yourself? Do you think? For sure. Unfortunately, I mean, I guess there's a lot of me in that character, and uh, um, I guess it's because I do go through a, a struggle to a certain degree in my own life about many things, not only about art, uh, and, and I think that uh, it's because I become opinionated, and uh, Dagobert is very opinionated, and he finds himself like he's decided this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. It happens to me in, life, in my life as well about, you know, any, many things, for sure. So what's the next step? Do you have any other projects in the uh, As you aptly put it at the beginning of this, this is definitely a unique thing, bizarre in its own way. Uh, so I'm doing something even more bizarre.
right now. Uh, I'm going to shoot a movie that has no dialogue, but it's not a silent film. Uh, it has no dialogue because the whole movie is shot in between conversations. So the conversation already happened. We just see what happens afterwards. And I'm trying, I shot the first chapter. I want to do 10 chapters, 10 minutes each. The first chapter worked, I mean, a little bit. I don't know if it worked for sure. So I'm going to shoot the other ones and just see what happens. So, yeah. I mean, that's my trend, I guess. Going to, from bizarre to bizarre and then weirder to the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. But nonetheless, uh, with the story, I do appreciate the fact that, you know, there is some sort of a thing, you know, not about experimental filmmaking or that stuff, yeah. Does anyone from the audience have any questions? Is that one up there? At the top, no? No, those are my parents. So they, don't, they don't even speak English, so yeah, okay. they don't have any questions. But thank you very much for coming, guys, and uh, um, I'll keep you posted if I make another. Yeah, if you could just join me in uh, giving another round of applause to my kids.